We tend to think that our height has something to do with the heights of our parents. Perhaps there is a linear relationship between a father's height and the heights of his son. Heights of fathers and their sons are included below. Use a 5% significance level to test the claim that there is a positive relationship between the heights. All right, so we have a list of father and son's heights. We have ordered pairs there. If you count, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So the n in this problem is 15. We have to remember that for later. We're going to need that number. Then they ask us to test the claim that there is a positive relationship between the heights of fathers and sons. And then give us some summary data, which is really helpful. They give us all the sum of square values. So we have the sum of square for xx, xy, and yy in the problem. All right, so let's do our first step of hypothesis testing, which is to express the claim in symbols. All right, so for this problem, the claim is about the slope, essentially, of the regression equation. Because to say that there's a positive relationship is to say that the slope for the regression line is positive. So we're going to say that beta 1 is greater than 0, which is another way to say it's positive, right? Numbers that are greater than 0 are positive. Notice it's just beta 1, not beta 1 hat. Beta 1 is the population parameter, whereas beta 1 hat is the sample uh, point estimator for beta 1. All right, so let's go on then and go to the next step, which is to express HO and HA. All right, now, as far as HA goes, it'll be the same as the claim because of the fact that this claim has a greater than symbol. For HO, we're going to have to express the opposite idea, which is that there is um, a, a negative or a zero relationship between the two. To say that the slope is zero is to say there's no linear relationship between the two. To say that the slope is negative is to say there's a negative linear relationship. So that's HO's argument, basically, because it has to compete against the HA, which is saying a positive relationship. So HO is saying a negative relationship or no linear relationship. Okay. Now from there, the next step is to get some data and use the data to form our test statistic, right? The data step here is quite involved. Let's start out with the idea that we said that the end for the problem was 15, right? We counted up 15 data values. We can see that alpha here is 5%. Then we have all these sum of square values. What we want to do with them first is to get the point estimator for the slope. In other words, we're going to need beta 1 hat, which is a vital part of our test statistic. So we're going to need that guy. And to get him, you're going to do SSXY over SSXX. So this is a value that we've worked with in the past. We're just going to plug these numbers in that they gave to us. They told us that SSXY is 41.173 repeating. So 41.173 repeating over SSXX, which they say is 160.93 repeating. 160.93 repeating. OK, let's take that information, enter it in our calculator, and come up with 41, come up with our point estimator. So 41.1733333 divided by 160.933333. And when we're done with that, we get the answer 0 0.25584 dot dot dot. OK, so that's enough decimal places for us to use. But if you want to be more accurate, you could store that in your calculator as a variable. Like I could store that as x and hold on to it for later. All right. Now, from there, the next step of the problem is going to be to take our information here, beta 1, and to use it to get the sum of square for error, so SSE. To get SSE, we need to remember the formula is SSYY minus beta 1 hat times SSXY, the mixed term. OK, let's plug that stuff in and see what that gives us. So the SSYY in this problem is supposed to be 124.1493 repeating. So 124.1493 repeating minus beta 1 hat, which we saw was 0.25584, essentially, times SS xy, which we saw was 41.173, 41.173 repeating. All right, let's work that out and see what that gives us as well. OK, so we'll have 124, 124.1493 repeating, minus our point estimator for the slope, which I've stored in my calculator as x, times 
0.173 repeating. When you do all that, you get the answer. 113.6155 dot dot dot. Okay, so basically 113.6155 on and on and on. All right, now once you have that value, the sum of square for error, our very next step is to get S from it. So use SSE to get S. So you can see we're following sort of a, a step procedure, right? We get the slope point estimator, we get sum of square for error, from that we're going to get S. And S is the square root of SSE over N minus 2. Now SSE we already worked out, that's 113.61550. Zero nine five. if you want to give it more decimal places, divided by n minus 2. Now n we said was 15, take away 2 we have 13, and then take the square root of that. Okay, so let's do that in our calculator. The square root of 113.6155095 divided by 13. Close it up, hit enter, and we get 2.956, so we're going to get 2.956290679. Okay, and then on and on and on. So I've given a lot of places for S there, but that's basically it. Now, from there, the next step after that, and the final important step for the data part of the problem, is to take that S value and come up with something called S, or the standard error for beta 1 hat. So S or the standard error for beta 1 hat. So it's like an S with a little scrub script of beta 1 hat there. And this formula is pretty straightforward. It's just the S value we just calculated divided by the square root of the sum of squares for the X values. Okay, so our S is going to be 2.956290679 over the square root of this value, SSXX, which is 160.93 repeating. Okay, let's work that out and see what that ends up giving us. So we'll have the number that we had for S, which is still in my calculator, the 2.96, so on and so forth, right? 2.956. And we're going to divide that by the square root of 160.933333. Hit enter after that, we get the answer finally. And this is the important part, 0 0.233036597. Now what I'm going to do with this value is I'm going to take that value and I'm going to store it in my calculator. I'm going to store that in my calculator under a different letter. I'm going to store it under S. And the reason why I want to do that is because I'm going to need it for my formula. I'm also going to need beta 1 hat. So all these calculations that we did, it's these two that matter the most beta 1 hat and s, or the standard error for beta 1. It is those two variables that will give us our test statistic for the problem. Okay, so let's get a new sheet of paper out and do our test statistic next. Okay, so now that we've manipulated our data, it's time to calculate our test stat. It's a very easy formula to calculate the test stat. We're just going to have, do a t statistic, and it's very simple. We take the point estimator for the slope, so beta 1 hat, divided by its standard error, S for beta 1 hat. And we just calculated those two values. It's the values I put in the boxes over there. So we're actually in really good shape to do this test stat, and it's really going to be simple. So it's 0 0.25584 dot 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 divided by the S value that we came up with, which was 0 0.23306 dot dot dot, right? Okay, now I've stored those values in my calculator so that I can do the division and get get it perfectly without any rounding. So if you remember, I sorted the beta 1 as x, and I sorted the s value as s in my calculator. So let's just put those in and see what we come up with. When you do the division, you get 1.0978, etc. OK, so let's just go ahead and round it off to three decimal places. We're going to say that the answer is 1.098. All right, so that's your t value in the problem. Once you have your t-value, you know your next step is to compare your test statistic against your critical value. So what I'm going to do here is draw a bell curve. Of course, it'll be a t-distribution, but it looks like a bell curve, right? It has the same bell shape to it. Draw a line in the center, label it at 0, 
And then we're going to determine based on the HA whether this is a right tail test, left tail test, or two tail test. When I look at HA, I can see it's a right tail test. So I'm going to draw a tail on the right hand side and I'm going to shade it. And so what we're going to be looking for is the critical value that goes right there. So that critical value will be a T alpha value because all the alpha will be put into one tail. The alpha here is 5%, so 0 0.05 is the alpha. And then the degrees of freedom is actually N minus 2 degrees of freedom. So in that case for us, it will be 15 minus 2 or 13. All right, so let's go to the table. We're going to look up in the 0 0.05 column, 13 degrees of freedom. And when we're done, we should get our critical value down here. Okay, so let's go check that out right now. Okay, so we're looking for 0.05 in one tail, and we're going to go down to degrees of freedom 13, so that's 1.771. Okay, so we found our critical value to be 1.771, 1.771. Now we're going to compare that against our test stat, and of course our test stat here we can see does not quite get out that far. It ends up landing over here in the white space, so our conclusion is therefore do not reject HO, and therefore do not support HA. Okay, now when we look at our claim, we see our claim is the same as HA, so we're going to use the phrase the sample data does not support the claim. So the sample data, the sample data does not support the claim. So it doesn't appear that there's, at least from this data, it doesn't appear that there is a positive linear relationship between a father's height and son's height. And remember, a positive linear relationship means that as one gets bigger, the other one gets bigger. So in other words, we'd expect that taller dads would have taller sons if that were true, and this data is not supporting that idea. So why does that happen? Well, it could be that simply the sample size is too small, or it could be that there is some other reason, like for example, maybe um, it's more complicated than simply the father's height. Maybe it's a combination of the father's height and the mother's height. And so maybe the genetics, you know, are, you know, it's not a certainty that the son will be taller just because the father's taller. And maybe that's the reason why we're not seeing a positive relationship that's strong enough to show up here. 